Hello, person. I'm working on some feedback from the second beta, and uh, things have gone quite well. Um, lots of happy people, and also, I'm a happy developer. What could be better? So right now I'm going to be working on trying something out here. I'm seeing if I can get um, this font, the big font, to look a lot better in the game. So um, I want to do a much higher resolution font. Like, let's check it out. Here's what the font looks like. Whoa, there. That's kind of what it looks like right now. So we got this like pixelated look, but I'm trying to do a higher resolution um, UI and fonts everywhere. So um, by default, and then also there's a pixel mode which goes and uses pixel fonts everywhere. So all of the pixels are exact. One pixel is one pixel, no matter whether it's the font or the UI or anything. So there's a mode where you can do that, uh, but I, but by default it uses this higher resolution stuff. So right now um, this font is not higher resolution. You can see these big old jaggies, big old jaggy pixels, and it just kind of degrades the quality of look of the game. So I'm gonna try out a, a higher resolution font if I can, quickly. If not, if I can't do it quickly, I will, I will um, move on to something else. So what we got here is 24 minutes on the timer. Pay attention to that timer, huh? And move on with this. Let's see, Orion Pax, let's see if we can, how big can we make this font size? Whoa, gigantic, awesome, I like that. Okay, how big are these fonts here? I started an extra large font, and I was, then I realized I could use this this tool called BM Glyph to make it way easier than having to redo every single um, font uh, character by hand. That's 120-ish. Let's do this here. Instead of 460, let's do 120. Okay, you can't change it by number. Okay, we'll just drag the slider. Font size, 119. Come on, can we get 120? Can I hear, do I hear 120? One, this is so hard to draw. Oh, yes, I got it. Man, that was really hard to, hey, Massey, what's up? The feedback was Chad, not beta. <laughs> Nice. Is that like Giga Chad type of stuff, or what are we talking here? How you doing, Massey? It's been a while since. Uh, been a while, man. Okay. This is looking good, except that uh, we don't want it to be all italicized like this. Zoom there. Oh, there we go. Zoom there, and uh, no, no italics. Trait regular, and make it white. What's this? What's this gradient? Hold on a minute. We have color selected. Gradient is not selected, but yet we have a gradient. Oh, this is the fill mode. Wait, wait whoa. No stroke. Oh, stroke. Fill mode color. Color white. Color white. There we go. Color is now wet. Can we do a? Can we do a drop shadow? Anti. -a Ooh, do we want? No, no, no anti aliasing. Transparency packing. Good. I don't think we could do. Man, I wish we could do a, a drop shadow on these. Oh, here it is. <laughs> nice. Okay, this is gonna be zero. Um, y is. There we go. Yeah, yeah, this, but no radius. Zero radius on that. Yeah, this is looking good. I'm liking that. Oh, maybe we should do a tiny stroke, actually. Yeah, that's, that's good. One pixel stroke, two pixel stroke. Make that font super clear. Eh, we'll try one at first. All right, uh, mode outer for the shadow, of course. Radius, yes, eight. All right, let's see how that looks. Okay, we're gonna save this as something. Um, we're gonna go to art, fonts, and we're gonna call this one extra large BM glyph. Yeah, I allow you to use that path. Never seen that pop up before. Okay, let's publish this. Actually, let's preview this. What kind of preview is this? This is weird. I don't I don't like the preview. Go back to the texture. Hi. Publish. Targets. Fault, okay. Maybe. Directory path. Uh, yeah. Same thing. Font. Allow. Tweet. We only spent six minutes so far. File name. X. Large. Suffix. NT, maybe? Forget how to do this. Force font face. No. Scale 100. Scale default. Yep, the BM font. Okie dokie. Publish. See how that went. What do we got here? Open art fonts. All right. See that, how that did. Do we? Oh, I started making OTF font. That's right. <laughs> cool. Okay, that's not what I did today though. We got a BM. What happened to the? Huh? What? What happened here? It looks like it didn't export anything. What's up? Data Wraith Binder art fonts. File name? Oh, x large font ping. Failed, failed. They're large, no suffix. Oh, are these suffixes like, oh, they're right. We got I, these are old iPad HD things. Publish, failed, failed. Why is it failing? Oh, this is a really old tool. I should probably update it. There, there's our, your folder. Click allow, font name, extra large. These four targets, I mean, any of this. Whatever, just two two targets. Failed, failed again. All right, it looks like, it looks like this, this tool is too old to be used right now. 
know. Maybe I'll try uploading it later. Okay, I worked eight, about 10 minutes on that. Okay, great. At least what I got done here is that we've got a, a font possibly to use later. Cool, that, that might look nice for, for later. All right, like, uh, let's get to the next things. These are quick things. Make the hidden jumper untargetable. Oh yeah, I was working on that already. Okay, I've got a little situation set up where I can catch, um, I can set untargetable on an entity and basically that makes the, the um, it makes this, this guy, this jumper guy, so he cannot be targeted by like an auto target, like the bow or the boomerang. If I hold those down, um, that will that will automatically target an entity that's nearby. So basically what I'm doing here is making it so you can't automatically target an entity, which would reveal that this is a hidden enemy. I don't want you to, re to reveal the hidden enemy by automatically putting these square target brackets on it. So we got this here, and I'm pretty sure the problem that we've got is that flag, the untargetable flag is not being parsed correctly. And I think I know exactly, I know exactly what to do here already. But this needs to be, let's think this X, Minus uh, 2800 and Y to Z2. Let's see if that's the right place. Yeah, okay, I think I know what the problem is here. We've got this little thing where we register words. Yep, this has got to be it. We don't have any words for positions. Here we've got render, input, move, health, AI, and position we can parse words as. And we got this other function here called parse flags word. And that just looks through any of these things. Let's see if we got all those things here. We got render, input, move. Render, there's, there's move, in, input, move, collision. Oh, no collision! Whoa. So, let's make sure collision's in there. Oh, let's just do this th uh, this way here. Oh, render, move, collision. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa! Hey, whoa! Whoa there, RC. Moving a little fast there. We're about to go over the edge. Health, AI, input, input, and position. Okay, good. Good stuff. Okay, we're gonna use these. Okay, this should work now. Dang. No. Why wouldn't it work? Hmm. Are you okay, that, that's all looking good. Okay, where are we failing? Let's. We're gonna have to debug here. Debugging is kind of like a last resort for me because it takes so long to load. Ah! All the things I could be doing during these five seconds. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't work. I eat you. Come on, baby. Second time's the charm. You got this. Yes. Oh, I think it's gonna work this time. All right, all right. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, which flag are we not parsing here? Um, let's V the B. Okay, no, no B. What are you talking about? Oh, because we're no, we have no behavior here. Our entity is creep jumper hidden for sure. Nice. I'm really glad that we're there. Stir value is untargetable. Probably have the negate word. Get um, negate. Negate. Negate is false. Oh, because we're setting untargetable. Our flag is nothing. Flag should be something. What's our int val? Position. Good. Okay, so that means that we're, we're not parsing the bits val correctly. For set flags untargetable. What? We're not? You gotta be kidding me. Oh, is it that they're... Oh, can you not parse words three deep? Is that the problem? I think it might be the problem. How about we put a fail safe in here. Okay, I know what's going on here. This is a complex system we're, we're diving into here. It's this whole behavior th tree thing. Basically what, what we're doing is we're parsing out this um, this statement right here. Set flags position untargetable. And I think what's happening is that it knows what the word untargetable is, but it's not parsing out the bits val for that word because it's four words deep, think. So we can put in this fail safe here and say, if not bits, then bits equals words parse bits. No, we're okay with like that. Yeah, all right. Okay, so now we sh we've got a fail safe in place. Oh, what, what happened here? Words, word, are we not, oh, words, C categories. Where is this at? 609, no viable overloaded equals. That means it's doing, if not bits val. Oh, bits val is a const here. So auto bits equals bits val, and then we can do bits, and then set bits here. Same thing probably here. What do we got here? Bits val zero, probably. Oh yeah, that's a const. Okay, auto bits equals bits val zero, and then verify parse bits, bits, and then bits val zero. Wait, bits val zero. We got bits val zero, one, two, and three. And we are at set flags position and targetable. Set is the word, and that would be bits val. Value zero, value one, value two. Okay, so that should be part of its value. Okay, let's see if this failsafe worked here. Man, I'm kind of jumping into the deep end here with this little debugging session, right? Man. Oh, it worked. 
Awesome, and hey, and I'm in the right place. Okay, so check it out. There's a secret little jumper guy right up here to the right. Boom, there he is. Okay, so I just showed you where he is. We're gonna try and target him, and we shouldn't be able to target him because we've got this set flags position untargetable, and we've also got sent flags position not untargetable once he becomes visible. So I should be able to hold down my bow and not be able to target him at first. And then when I, as soon as he reveals himself, then I should be able to hold the bow. So I'm aiming sort of up to the right there. And normally he, it would lock on target. So I'm gonna let, go ahead and uh, get him. There he is, now he's visible. I just gotta get him kind of like isolated from this. Like, there we go. Yes, cool, we can lock on target. Boom, it worked. Oh, that's really great. What happened now? Ay, ay, ay. Okay, we're calling set flags. Okay, we should make this little set flags a little bit more friendly. Okay, we've got an assertion failure in here that's failing, and it's these new ones I just added. Let's make these a lot more friendly. First of all, it's not th it's not this that we're failing on. This is the one we need to, f to focus on here. So, if we fail to parse flag, then that means bits val is, is not parsing for one of these, which means that we just need to show... Oh, hey, there's a collision category would obviously not work. Okay, well, anyways, we need to show the int val, turn that into a string value, so we can say, um, cannot parse, cannot parse behavior flags. Actually, we should, this should, this should be a percent %s. That's the category, or like our type of flag we're looking for. And then our next thing is can't parse that flags from the string value here. Okay, so this is words, look up, words, uh, see behavior and int val dot cster and this is um, from the string I think that's just stir val or no it's word word dot cster okay so let's go ahead and crash that again well not crash it but assert fail it and this time we'll have a bit of a better description therefore we won't have to debug and hopefully that's faster to find this bug than it is by actually debugging okay so what happened last time I got him to reveal himself and then I locked on target Maybe it was some other enemy I got engaged. There we go. Cool. Cannot parse move flags from none. Oh, the word none? You use the word none. Of course you want the word none to be... Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> okay, so word... So we can have not word or word equals none or flag. So we were calling set move flags none. So, right. We assert that the value is true that we either don't have a word or... The word is none, or we parsed a flag from that word. Do we have anything where it says, okay, that should work, Let's try that out. Okay, that took a while, huh? That took like at least 16 minutes so far, right? To do this one little thing. That's okay, okay. This one was a gotcha. It took a little bit longer than usual. Oh, maybe it's the gold thief set move flags. What does gold thief have that he's setting move flags for? <laughs> Look at this guy. Cool, we're not crashing anymore. I really like that. Awesome. Let's check this in. Oh, okay. So we've got some creep jumper changes. Oh, we don't want him to have 2,000 hit points anymore. That was just so he didn't die too fast while I was testing it. All right. We changed his name from creep jumper to creep jumper hidden, which it was supposed to be. And then we basically were setting this untargetable flag as soon as he's invisible and he's hiding in the grass. As soon as he's visible and he's you can now hit him, then it sets flat. It takes off that untargetable flag. And then we had to uh, modify the AI system to make all that work. Um, there were some unforeseen things that happened. One of them that was that it couldn't parse the word from the position flags, which I added those, and collision flags as well. That was really important to add. And then um, we've also got this thing where, where we've got a fail safe in place where it ver when it's verifying the parse bits from a word into bits, it can um, t it can it can realize that those bits are empty and then parse them. Um, so before it usually parses these bits beforehand in the whole behavior system, this whole subsystem. Uh, but that happened. That's sort of a fail safe in case it doesn't parse for some reason. Um, and then this we're setting. Okay, let's make sure I did this right. Bits equals bits val b dot set from bit, and we verify bits. It's good. And then this is a, this is a nice little assertion failure to make sure we the bits value actually parsed. We've got two arguments here and two percent arguments in the format string. And then we've got this here, bits equals bits val, verify parse bits. We wanna do that before we use the bits. Here we're using the bits, we use bits and bits. It's good, good stuff. Okay, so let's commit, oops, the whole thing. Let's get commit AI system. Solve, not, um, set flags, position, un, untargetable, not working. But it 
works now. Get commit data. Great. Here's one I can actually not have to type twice. Haha. <laughs> Make jump. Untargetable. You, thou art untargetable now. I swear if anybody comes into these grassy grasses, they won't be able to find you. Promise, creep jumper hidden stuff. Okay, close. Yes. That's one down. I need to add thing to the thing to my list I just did there. The unforeseen thing. Set flags position on targetable. It works now to have everything I did on my list in this little done pile. So when at the end of my day, I look at my done pile and go, wow, look at that. I did 10 things or whatever. How many have I done so far? 13, 10, 11 things. Wow. Awesome. Okay. This shouldn't be too hard. <laughs> this next one definitely won't be too hard. Definitely won't take more than five minutes. How many times have I ever said that? Stop playing the mana field on death so you can die on a mana field and it keeps playing the sound forever. What's with that? Okay, how does it play the mana field sound? Mana field? How does that sound work again? Okay, obviously not the AI. Recharge mana fields. Obj name mana field. That's it. Ending on a recharge field. Huh. Where does it play the sound? Oh, there it is. Play sound looped. Mana. Ent render profile play sound looped. We want to... Isn't there a thing in profile? It's like stop all loops. No? There's not? Oh, okay. I got it. So how about um, we got render profiles. How about in Render component destruct. Render component destruct. Oh, here's our stop loops. It's supposed to do that. Oh, maybe because it doesn't call render component destruct. Here's fade all sounds. That sounds like a good thing to, to do. So we got oh, fade sounds for an id. It looks through all the fades and says, uh huh. If I found the, the right id, then set it to fade out or whatever kind of fade you want. Yep, yeah, that would work. Okay, then we all, this other thing, fade all sounds does indeed do that. Great. But I'm concerned because profile play sound loop. Doesn't it? There it is. Okay. It goes int sound ID, return sound ID. Oh, it doesn't store anything to the to the profile. Id key false negative one. Okay, so yeah, we could just call alright, we got it. How about in render system clear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want audio. Wait, is there an audio system clear? Yeah, there is. Okay, first let's see if we still have the bug. So we can confirm all this is actually working. And then we'll enable that piece of code and then see if it works. All right, we need a mana field. Where's one of these mana fields? There's one. Boom. Dang, it's not supposed to be making that bright white color. Yeah, but it's bugging me. Anyways, let's die. Dang, there's something else that already calls fade all sounds? After victory does. Hmm, why the heck that, that worked? It shouldn't have worked. I saw this bug happen the other day. Couldn't, I could barely hear that. Let's turn that up a bit. We also have an NM that does that. Which one's this? Close curtains. Also, fade all sounds. Okay, where does audio system clear get called? Yo, drum drum. What's up? Code.shazam. Oh, that's all I need to do is just execute that. Hey, hey, what? Hey, check it out. Let's make sure that happens right now. Code.shazam. Zam. Are we gonna turn into like Black Adam if this happens or something? Doesn't look like a bug to me. Doesn't look like a bug to me either. Code not Shazam. It's not compiling. Why is it not compiling? This is the best code I've ever seen. It's not compiling. What? You've been fighting a- Oh no. Yes. Right on. I'm glad you're here. Oh man. I'm super glad you're here. Give me some more code to type in. This is really great. Code not Shazam is, is- I'm gonna keep that commented out forever. Okay, check it out. World- Clear world calls audio system clear, so. Heck, let's just leave this on commented. Let's do one more thing too. Let's make it so that the mana field can't start playing its sound. That was in move system. Um, if the world is victorious. So if actually, yeah, now, yeah, we'll keep that. If no render, yeah, yeah, yeah. World, get victory type. Okay, let's see if that works now. So you know it's probably gonna work because we did that code dot shazam and commented it out. I bet you that's what's gonna make this work right now. It's gotta be it. Hundred, totally, hundred percent. Okay, wait. We're over here on this little guy right here, standing on this. I hear some mana field sounds. Bloop, 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 bloop. I die. Okay, I still hear it, but that's because it's it didn't trigger it again. After we see this little menu at the end here, there, it didn't start playing it again. And here we don't hear it. Boom. I love that. Nice. Okay, we're checking this one in. This bug is fixed, sort of. I was not able to confirm it perfectly, but that's okay. I'm beyond perfection at this point. Sometimes you just gotta accept that some things can't be perfect with a code base that's as big as it is. Okay, great. We did that. We we did the code dot shazam. We did the fade all sounds, and it pretty much worked. Okay, so let's um. 
Boop. And do that, and put that there in the done pile. Copy this so we don't have to type it twice. Stop playing Man of Field on death. Boom, another one down. How long did that take? I forgot how, what the timer was before, oh well. Oh, making the warning marks more noticeable. That's a really easy one. <laughs> wow, still got it, I see. Yes. Okay, here we are, Magic of Voxel. Let's make these warning marks more noticeable. Um, let's start with an enemy. Let's get, uh, let's get the player to a point where we can see these little warning marks that the creeps leave. Oh shoot, actually the, right where we were is perfect. Stay there. We're gonna go starting with the creep, um, what is he called? The Harrier, Creep Harrier Warning. Boom, there's his warning. He's got this little exclamation point, right? We're gonna make that more noticeable. Ahora mismo, go, rapido. Um, how about we start with making the shape bigger, dilate. Oh, wrong color. That color there, baby. That's it. Pure white. Boom. When it's pure white, it doesn't add outlines inside the voxel engine. So pure white is what we want to use here. Any pure white color will do as long as it's pure white. Flood. Why isn't flood? Oh, dilate. There we go. Whoa, that's kind of it's really dilated there. Let's see if that's more noticeable. If I'm in here and I'm fighting this guy, is it more noticeable? Oh, you know what? We probably should flash to black. Then it would be definitely noticeable. Okay, here we are. Oh, you know what? Oh, yep, that's that's a little bit more noticeable. It would definitely be more noticeable, though, if we're black. We're flashing to black. Okay, so, so, here's what we do. We go into the art models folder. Art models. And then we copy, creep, um, Harrier. What did I forget that guy's name? Warning, zero. Two, creep, Harrier, warning, one. And then make this one mostly black. Not all the way black, because all the way black gets sometimes translated into outline colors. Sneaky little thing. If you set your color to less than z eight, I think, green, then it will, the voxel engine will translate into an outline color. Sneaky little things you gotta know about your game engine. Good thing I wrote this game engine. For this voxel engine, at least black. We want not quite black. The, the, there we go. Above eight. We need like nine, 12. Let's do 17. It's warning one. Hard, hard lessons learned along the way. Believe it or not, I've been working on this game for four years now. Oh my, that sort of, it feels like way too long. But you know what? Sometimes making games takes a long time especially a game like this this game is built to last that's the whole that's the whole goal for this game that's my goal that's my ultimate goal in life is to make a game that lasts not a consumable game that you play once but a game that you can play over and over harrier warning here it is okay we got to make this buddy flash like crazy fast point one is way too slow we need like zero one six 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 is uh, 60 frames a second let's do three three two let's try three two so that should flash black and white really fast like a lot oh but it's not gonna I wonder if that's just gonna do two frames though oh no yeah that looks good oh but it does the whole outline it thing huh yeah d d totally right that's what I'm trying to do but it's it's probably not gonna happen with d2 like not gonna be quite d2 level well you know what maybe I'm not gonna you know what I'm not gonna sell myself short I'm not gonna sell this video game short either who knows maybe it will be d2 replay quality that's the that's the goal you think the outline looks good it kind of does oh because he's got the outline because he's got fire makes sense it's definitely more noticeable that way all right and that's the whole point right to make this more noticeable okay cool a couple little little bit of modification here i want to see so we are at let's get these little this is our camera angle it's about 35 or 30, 35 actually yeah so see how we can't really see the the exclamation points um a distinction between those points when we get to that camera angle let's like take away some voxels and then go back to our camera angle again see that looks better to me cool i like that and then we go to here and do the same thing on this one makes it uniform oh i get you on that well you know what let's see if we, let's see if it looks even better if we change this one white color to be not quite pure white and that will make it so it gets outlined and we'll see what that looks like and if that works all we got to do is just kind of copy paste this onto the other warnings for the other um creeps yeah, you can definitely see a, a distinction between the bottom and the top. What happens if we slow down time? Yeah, okay, that'll work. I like it. In fact, I do like the outline on the on it now. It definitely makes it more noticeable. Look at that. That's awesome. Cool. Okay, let's copy paste basically. <laughs> Sexy. Oh, very. Whoa. Oh, good stuff. Okay, let's copy and start with another enemy. Okay, that guy's good. Um, let's go start from the beginning. Archer two. Warning. Archer two. Oh, would be really awesome if I did the right colors first. So this would be something like 250, and this one would be 17. Save that, then copy, and then we can that. Look at good. Warning. 
one. Oh, I should have waited to copy that. Ah, hey, let's do this. Copy it again. So easy. This is this is what you get. You get professional points when you do things that are effortless. I just got so many professional points for that. Like at least one or two points. All right, Archer 2. Oh, one more thing to do with Archer 2. Archer 2. Make sure his animation is super fast. Oh, 3, 2. Warning. Oh, 3, 2. Done. Good stuff. Okay, next one is Archer. Regular Archer. Archer number one. Hey. 50. This guy right here. 17. As in the number after 16. As in 2 to the 4th power. Goes one pixel there. Belated. You've been belated. Whoop. Okay. Now this is so easy. It's the next command. Oh, I wish all commands were this easy. Paint. Bam. Archer 1. Archer. This is getting faster. Arch Come on, Archer. There you are. Warning. I just put it. Yes. Oh, I had to press with the letter S to do that. Oh. More pro points. How many pro points can I rack up today? Baller. Baller warning. Uh, you never, because you get stuck off on pixel nitpicks. Dude, trust me. I get so stuck on pixel nitpicks so often. Oh, especially when I'm, whenever I'm not watching the time. I got this little clock up here in my top right, right? It's like a counting down every half an hour. It counts down and it makes me take a break. Um, so if I pay attention to that, sometimes I do effective work. But if I don't pay attention to that, ooh, it's pixel nitpicks for the rest of the night. I could easily see sink three hours into one pixel art image. Easy. I know what you mean. I know what you mean, fellow, fellow pixeler. Yes, forever, right? Easy to, oh my god. And voxeling, man, when I'm trying to voxel these characters, I'm like, oh, I could just like delete that one voxel there. Like it's our, oh dude, th the temptation is real. Just even looking at this thing. Look how messy that looks. Oh, oh, <laughs> I can't look at it. I can't look at it. Baller. So the goal for this actual enemy is to turn him into an actual ball. I haven't actually done his artwork yet, but eventually he's gonna look like a big ball. It's gonna be sweet. Don't, don't even show me. Duh, duh. I'm not even gonna mention it for my sake and for your sake. That's looking great. Let's copy that again. There we go. Hey. Oh, what? Not good. This camera. Oh, okay. Oh, we. <laughs> Let's see what's wrong. Let's at least get that right there. Huh? Did we do the archer right? I'm like wondering. Okay, he's good. Baller. Okay, copy one more time. And paint. And paint. Okay, here we go. Here we go. What's next? Creep baller's done. Not the damage. Not the damage warning. That's a different thing. The floater. That guy, we're not using this guy yet, but we'll do him anyway. You're getting done, guy. 250. Paste. Looking good. Pro points. Ba bam Everybody out there that's watching this stream or this recording, you can earn pro points too. All you gotta do is be more efficient with your work. And then you can just give yourself as many points as you want for that. That's how this, the game works. Pretty sweet. You can keep track in your head, or you can keep track on a piece of paper. You can keep track by drawing lines in the dirt for all I care. It's your game. Play it how you want. Floater warning zero. Floater warning one. Boom. Okay. Harrier. We did the Harrier already. Look at that. Look how beautiful. Oh, oh, we've forgotten to do a couple things along the way. <sighs> what? We did Archer 2. Let's do a little. Here's what we need to look for. We need to look for a warning. Space base. Yeah, look at that. Bam. I got a, I got an even better thing to search for. Warning. Space base. The big letter C. Beautiful. We do all these at once. Okay, we did Archer. We did Archer 2. We didn't do the baller. There we go. Now we can just press the letter S to do it again. Pro points. Pro points forever. Look at this. Oh, all I gotta press is the letter S. <sighs> this is the one of the most beautiful things I've ever done. Wow. Pro points all day. Through the roof for sure. The roof is on fire with this one. Mine. Yep, the mine has a warning. Sneaker. Sneaker. This is at least 10 pro points right here on my scale. I'm like, I need to set up proof significantly. Which way? Oh, you mean just doing it this way? With the searching first? Great. All those are done. Bam. Now all we gotta do is finish the art. Okay, we did Archer. We did, we're did. we up to Harrier. Jumper. Jumper next. Jumper warning. Look at this little guy. I love this little guy. One of my favorite enemies. Oh, not using Xcode as a text editor? Whoa, you, you used to watch me doing um Xcode? Dang, that was back in the day, right? Yeah, I did used to use Xcode all the time. And uh, man, it's a lot slower than Vim. First of all, Vim is way better for your finger. You get way more pro points. Yes, Songbringer Days. Oh, what's up, Gladiar? Was your name Gladiar back then? Or has it changed? Songbringer Days. Oh, all those five days a week of streaming. There was a lot of streaming I used to do back then. Today, I'm trying to focus on other social networks too. Oh, Feralogics, I remember that name. That was it. Yep, cool, dude. Hey, what's up, welcome. How you been? It's 2023 now. Back then, it was like 2020, 2017, 2018, probably 2017. 
or, or 16. What up? Jumper warning. And, and happy new year to you too. It's 2023, brand new year. We can do whatever we want. Yeah, that was back. That was back in the day. That was when I was, co remember I was coding in the closet back then? I had a closet stand-up desk. Now I have a real standing stand-up desk. I've significantly improved not only my, my IDE, but my actual battle station. Yeah, that's right, I'm slaying the code. Slaying it, dude, check it out. Check out which code I've done, look at this. Uh, let's see how many lines of code are in Wraith Binder so far. 160, 160,000 lines of code. <laughs> totally, best, best code ever. Damn, I didn't know it was up to that much already. Last time I looked, it was like 120. Now it's 160. Wow, this game's getting bigger. But four years, I mean, four years, there you go, 160,000 lines of code. Wow, my, my, my. Mamma mia! 160k, nasty. Mmm, ch, mm, ch Ah, yeah, nasty. Nasty code. Whoa! It was that Shazam. It was the Shazam code the Drum Drum uh, put in there later, earlier, that really added a ton to the, the ton of nasty to it. Yeah, oh, bam! You, you, you need Vim at that point for sure, right? Oh, oh my god, I'm so glad I made the switch to Vim. That was, that was all because I started getting, um, Carpal Tunnel. I was like, you know what? I need to really change up how I type things. And um, today I don't have carpal tunnel anymore, and I and I can and I get so many pro points for all the things I type fast. Why not? Oh, there it is. Night two warning. Do 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 do. Ooh. Yeah, so even in, um, I've even got Vim set up so I can debug in Vim too, which is pretty sweet. It's kind of slow though. Xcode is actually faster <laughs> to debug with, but it's just really neat that I can actually debug from the command line in Vim. Oh yeah, look at that. This guy needs to be taller. Let's see if we can get a couple more, just a, just a little more voxels. Just a couple more. Can I just get a little more voxel here? I only want, I'm only asking for a little bit. Holy what? Don't delete the whole thing, right? Let's do about that. There. Boom, looking great. Yeah, modern ED. Which one are you using now? What's Copilot? Uh, doop, 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 doop. Uh, night two. Oh, you're using VS Code? Cool. Yeah, uh, this is a real popular one. People, everybody's loving VS Code these days. But personally, what what is it? So tell me what it is about VS Code that's better than Visual Studio. GitHub Copilot? The AI thing? What is it? I've never heard of this Copilot thing. What does it do? Yeah, there we go. That's looking great. Night. <laughs> look, how, look how slowly this thing scrolls with the scroll wheel. Like, oh God, <laughs> so much effort. Not getting pro points for that. Really gotta contact the guy that made F Tracy. He's, it's legit, huh? The AI thingy. What does it do though? Does it like, does it learn your mach your learn what you code all the time and help you type faster? Yeah, Adam, but actually fast, right? Oh, so it's, oh, so it's faster than, v than Visual Studio. You'd use Vim otherwise? Cool. Gotta love, I love Vim these days. So great. Oh yeah, Visual Studio is older, right? It's like way older. It comes back, it's from back in that day. So pretty much Microsoft is no longer up, isn't, I wonder if Microsoft's even, like, are they gonna eventually get rid of Visual Studio? I wonder. They're still updating it. I'm still using Visual Studio for some reason. Oh, it's like an AI system that suggests you code completions. Ah, that's cool. I gotta check that out. I'm actually gonna put that on my list of things to do. Here, check out GitHub's Copilot. I wonder if it works in Vim or if there's a Vim mod extension or something. Vim plugin that uses GitHub Copilot, right? It, like it learns your actual code. That would be freaking sweet. Mind warning, getting through these. This is this one. This little thing on the list took a little bit longer than the other things on the list, but that's okay. Yeah, probably not, but you'd be surprised. There, if there's a way, there's somebody out, and if it's a, if there's a way and it's a useful tool, someone out there in the Vim version has made it work I swear like it's amazing what people do in vim and then you just go to their github and copy their stuff and boom it's in your vim too but but I'm, I'm making it sound way too easy there's always a lot of tweaking to do with vim you're like well the pl I want the plugin to work a little bit differently I really want like like the um, like the thing I use to debug with for example I've got this debugger plug plugin that uses GDB or LLDB from the command line basically in vim and man, I tweaked the hell out of that plugin to get it just how I wanted it. Uh, and don't even get me started on, on my VM, my VimRC. That thing is custom doubted. How long is that thing? Dang, VimRC. What is this? Oh, it's only a thousand lines. It's only a thousand lines. Only a few custom functions. Lots and lots of settings. Oh, look at this. A lot of cut commented out code too. And it's all still written in Vim script. You can use. I'm using NeoVim, which means you can you can switch over to Lua completely and get rid of Vim script. <laughs> 
Really nice. I'm glad you sunk hours into it too. Oh, and your dot files? Yeah, <laughs> right? It's just like, it's just like pixeling. Just like getting real detailed with some juicy pixel art. Kind of thing you could spend the rest of the night working on. And not even notice the time went by. Complete flow state. Yeah, you're, you're on NeoVim Terminal and Fish as well? That's my setup. Oh, you ditched iTerm 2. What'd you go with instead of iTerm 2? Oh, there was another one coming out. Or, um, I saw one recently. It wasn't... Oh, you're just using plain terminal? No way! Respect. That's that's pro points right there. Plain old terminal? Nice, what? nice work, right? That's so pro, you don't even have to install anything on a new system. You're just, boom, I got terminal already. Yeah, right, there's another one. I think I installed it even. Uh, it? Oh, it's Kitty. It's called Kitty. And it's got some pretty cool stuff in it, actually. Um, but I couldn't quite get it to work as well as iTerm 2. But what's cool about Kitty is it's super cross-platform. Like, you can install it on Linux and all that. Oh, that's a different one? Oh, cool. There's another one, huh? Paint this black. Boom. Sneaker 2. Warning, warning. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're getting close to being finished with this task. Warning 0. 250. 250. This one, 17. Not 0. Alacrity. Ah, yes, I've heard of this one. Oh, I think Kitty is actually based on Alacrity. Like, Kitty is forked from Alacrity. Pretty sure. I remember something about the names being close, and then I was like, what? The names are so close. But yeah, I think Kitty is based on Alacrity. Could be wrong, but probably not, because I'm so pro. What? I'm so pro, I didn't even know I didn't close Kitty. That's not very pro. I mean, this is like a minus pro point. Leaving an app running in the background? What's with that? Unless it saves me time, then it's okay. Then it's a pro point, right? No pro points for you if it doesn't save time. But hey, if being lazy saves you time, by all means. That's so pro. Creep spider. It's the last one. One of the last ones. Spider warnings. Look at this little guy. Oh, I love these enemies. Pretty much could have just copied jumper guy. Oh my god. Pro point. Points. Spending countless hours in your setup so you don't have to move a finger. Totally. Totally pro. Spider jumper. Whoops. Warning zero. Boom. Yeah. Pro points. I didn't even have to pixel that one or voxel that one. Nice. I get at least two pro points for that. One day you have to change your laptop or update Mac OS and everything explodes. <laughs> right. Oh my god. Yes. We're done with this. Awesome. Let's uh, do this and then let's do that and then let's try it out. We're gonna go ahead and start at zero. Um, start at Z zero and let's play a little bit. Oh, we don't want these X's and Y's. Hold on. Oops. Oh, well. Ah, it worked. Okay. Okay, we're gonna play a little bit and see how these guys look. Oop. Turn on some music. That's better. Cool, I like it. Oh, yeah. Yes, that does look way more clear. Super noticeable. He's got this super fast animation to his exclamation. Yeah, that's looking great. Can't help myself, but I'm getting all the treasures. Okay, I've seen you already. What's some more of those uh, sneaker guys? Here's one of them. Sneaker guy, how does your exclamation? Yep, yeah, good, it looks good. I like it. Good job there, sneaker guy. Okay, let's go to the next level. You're gonna go learn Moonlander keyboard layout this year. What's, what's Moonlander? Oh, the archer isn't, he isn't flashing. Ah, let's find out why they're not flashing. Probably... Warning. Okay, creep, archer. Oh, it's split? Oh, cool. Nice. Oh my god, I love my split keyboard layout. This is this took a little bit to get used to, but it wasn't the split part that was hard to get used to. It was the non-staggered layout, right? These are all the keys are straight up and down, which is so much better than a staggered layout. Moonlander. Cool. I'll check this out. Got a link open for later. I do need another one though. I I have one nice split keyboard. This is all custom. Got this baby made in um uh, where, where did I get it? I got it from XYZ, no, BoardSource.XYZ. They're pretty cool. They like shipped me out the PCB boards. They soldered on all this, the switches or the soldered on something. These little control unit things. But yeah, the rest I put on these keys, put on all these little bumps and stuff like that so I can t type my feel. Oh, angle changes? Yeah. Ooh, those could be crazy, right? Luckily this one has no angle changes. Oh, you're talking about like, oh yeah, like a staggered layout? Oh yeah. Nice. I'll, I'm really going to check them out. I'm might get another keyboard soon. I really want to get a wireless one as well as this wired one. I love this wired one because it's so, you know, 
instant, right? You're not gonna have any Bluetooth delay, but I really do want a wireless version of a split keyboard just for like, you know, just to have, just cause I'm a geek and I want all of my geeky tools. Warning for that, that'll find it faster. Animate warning zero. We just go animate warning. Oh, if you rotate one side, yeah. That, oh, totally. I'm always, before I ever start typing, I'm always like, I always adjust the side so it feels really natural. But yeah, that's, that was a thing. I totally had to get in the habit of doing that. Huh, that didn't work. How about if we play this multiple times? We know, you know what, what's probably happening is it's animating something else. Hold on, is there any more animate warning? No, that's it. It's the only warning animation here. Wait, is this, are they bigger? Yeah, 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 definitely, right? It takes a, it takes a while. Luckily, I kind of like had, I did this all last December when I had a lot of free time. I did, I wasn't, there were no betas I was doing for Wraithbinder. It was kind of a good moment. Oh, I see what's wrong. It's actually using an old an animation. We can go make clean cat. Yeah, let's keep that at five for now. Make sure that this actually did touch pads. The bane of my existence. Sure, warning zero and warning one. Yeah, these are fine. Oh, did I make sure there's a hashtag on? Yep, there's the hashtag on the model there. Okay, let's see if that worked. We basically cleaned the whole cache out. There might've been an, an extra file in there somewhere. Basically it takes all these voxel models and caches them because it has to convert them and shade them and do all this cool stuff in the voxel engine. So we cleared out the cache. Hopefully now it's, it works. We want to see that, that warning box flickering. That's still not flickering. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ah, doesn't matter too much. I'm spending too much time on this. I'm gonna go ahead and try out a couple more enemies and then just commit this. I can't spend forever on this one little thing. It's really cool that most of the enemies have a nice flashing warning sign now. Uh, what's over here? Oh, hey, what's up, guy? Yeah, this guy's got ice arrows. Perfection is the enemy of God. <laughs> I love it. I think you meant good, but I know, but it's it's so great that you didn't write good. Uh, 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 oh, I don't need to kill this guy. Fighting like, like I really mean it here. Okay. Okay, let's go to the next dungeon. Check a couple more enemies. Yeah, nice. I love those warnings. They look great. This guy too. Yep, he's got a flashing warning too. Super noticeable. Cool. Let's go to the next dungeon. Oh, the baller guy. Why doesn't he have a warning? Oh, I guess I didn't program him to have one yet. What about this little guy here? The jumper. Jump back over here, jumper. Oh, he doesn't ever use a warning. Oh, that's right, because he gets super, super crowds up the whole screen if he, he does do a warning. Like, the whole screen turns white if there's a ton of spiders. Good stuff. This is all looking great. Let's commit this. Okay, get... Oh, let's add all those. Archer 2, Archer, Baller, Jumper, Knight, Knight, Sneaker, Sneaker. Looking good. Get add art models. Get bit art models. Commit art for more noticeable warnings. Uh-huh. And then over here in list, we can cross this one off the list. One more thing off the list. Not on the list anymore, nope. All data modifications here. Uh-huh, yep, okay, yep, okay. Looking good, excellent, yes. Good, good then, very good, yes, good. Good, good, good. Awesome. Okay, dokie, how are we doing on time? Totally pro point. That's another pro point at least. We got a little bit more time. Don't show a weird number instead of the floor on the dark seed when using the checkpoint portal. Should be easy enough. Um, okay, let's see what happens if we just do a regular... Okay, we're gonna hack my save game here, so... No, I, we just go to... We already have a checkpoint. I already got a checkpoint activated there at three. So, if we go to Z, negative one, we will have a checkpoint. We can go ahead and use it and see if we have this weird issue where it shows the wrong oh my god i don't need to do this much testing for i do this way more pro but regardless let's see if this actually does can confirm this so i'm using a checkpoint and what we'll see is a weird number in the bottom left of the screen if this is doing its thing what happened oh we have a couple of settings wrong here so we got turn off skip to light turn off skip scene so we can actually see this scene and then that still needs to be negative one okay looks good god mode enabled okay we have to wait each time for that up, up, up. Use checkpoint. Yeah, look at that. Look at that big number. I shouldn't say that. So it's called Animate Dungeon Transition. Yeah, yeah. And then we've got this thing where we set the 
<laughs> string. Where is that string? Uh, hmm, world, a yeah, world labels. Stir title desk. That would be desk, I guess. What? No, no, desk. There it is. Get mission coordinates. If dungeon or the next mode is dungeon, huh? I'm actually kind of confused why it's not doing this other thing here. I need to kind of need to figure that out. Okay, we're gonna actually use the debugger here. Here we go. Here goes. Here goes five seconds here. Down the drain. Minus one pro point for having to debug. Could have just not debugged. Oh, there. Gotta do it again. Sometimes you just gotta do it twice. Cause like it's it's the timing of it all. The timing of this thing. This thing is slow and I've got this one little script running in the background which is like hey once this does this thing then that happens and sometimes it doesn't happen fast enough. It's, it's all evening out a little bit. I'm just the right amount of pro. Uh, oh, nice. Here we go. Okay, set, let's jump into this method here. What's going on here? Why are you not dungeon mode? What's mode? Ship? Oh, we're on the ship, of course. What's next mode? Next mode is void? Well, this explains it. Where is this all being called from? Let's step up the... We're, we're walking up the front, the call tree. Oh, we're being called from world change world, of course. And we're inside there. We are doing this scheduled before tick. A little bit after this curtain's... Okay, so mode is still ship. All right. That's fine. We'll just go in here and say, if next mode is, we can keep it how it is, but hold on. There it is, coordinates. Get mission coordinates. If next mode is dungeon or this mode is ship as well, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. I was thinking like maybe I should check for mode battle. Battle is like the PVP mode and that'll eventually get enabled. There's this whole PVP mode, which is just kind of like waiting on the back burner. First I'm doing this whole roguelite mode and then there'll be a co-op play to add to this roguelite mode. And then eventually I'll bring out this PvP mode, which is done already, for the most part. Why do we start there? That's kind of weird. Why am I a different color? Well, oh, look, oh! <laughs> There's two of me. I think what happened here is the server... So the server's running, man. That buddy is just sitting there in the background doing stuff. And it put me in a game with myself. So I've got myself that I'm green, and I've got myself that's blue. We're both in here. Apparently my other self is still here. And I'm here. I don't know how that works. But the server thinks it makes sense, so we'll just trust it. So it's up to you, server. Okay, floor four of 16. That's all I wanted to see. Excellent. Cross another one off the list. Oh, yeah. Pro points for not having to type it. Good stuff. Another one down. Okay, we're going to reduce the knockback of the, the fist attack. Fist knockback. I think that's in items. Totally doesn't need a do Holy pros. Pros don't need to double check. A single check is enough. <laughs> oh my god. Just like pixeling, man. A double checking is another one of those things. I could I could double check all night. Like, let me just check it one more time. Okay, okay. I know that I did it that way, but let me just try it. It's just slightly different this time. I promise it might be different this time. Items. Text. Fist. There we go. Trims. Damage. Cooldown. Knockback. Oh. This is, this is that easy. Sweet. We're gonna go ability blade zero. No more blade. And we also need to take off of uh, our hand our no unequip the sword. Go to a dungeon. And we don't need these extra points here. And okay, so now we. Whoa! Did you hear that sound in the background? I forgot the game was still running. That was funny. What happened? What is going on? Oh, it's saved. Okay, we gotta do all that stuff over. It's saved. Okay, anyways. Oh, it's saved with the checkpoint. Alright, alright. What do we have here? A ability... Oh, we got a ability blade. Okay. Unequip the sword. Let's try that again. Engine shredder. Totally. Did you hear it? It sounded like... Cool. We're hitting stuff with the... Oh, what? We have a blade? What's going on here? I thought I got rid of that. It was funky! Oh, uh... Because I'm hacking my file. What's going on here? What did I hack wrong? Oh, because I still have the blade. There we go. Turn that off. Will I leave some cheats in? Of course I will. Are you kidding me? Of course I will. <laughs> There'll be some really awesome things you one might call a bug that we're going to call a feature slash cheat. Heck yeah. I want things to be able to be unbalanced. It is so fun to me when a game is just exploitable. You know, I try to write the best code I can, but there's still there's still bugs no matter what you do. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave some of them in. The fun ones, of course. There was this, there was this really funny bug. There's a there's an ability called jump. In fact, here I'll just hack hack the jump ability in here real quick and show you what I mean. Oh, but I fixed it already. There was this there, so there was this really um it, it was totally game breaking 
this bug in it. Um, it basically allowed you to jump, double jump forever. So you could just jump, 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 and keep going as higher and higher and higher and higher. And if you get high enough, we're talking like 4,000 Z voxels high, um, you'd crash the game. So it was like, it was kind of fun. You're like, whoa, I could just jump forever, but it really kind of broke everything and, and crashed the game. So I kind of had to take that one out. But it was inspiring enough that I'm like, you know what, there needs to be a relic where you can double jump or triple jump or something. So there's gonna be that. That's one of the one of the planned relics. Okay, all we gotta do is go to this and set the knock back down a bit. Let's set it to 50, not 150. Let's see how that feels. There's a lot of relics to be done. Um, there's a splitter relic I really wanna do on the ranged weapon. So like if you have a bow, it'll split your attack into two. And then I want to do um, lots of relics that can stack. Okay, uh, I'm gonna see if the if zero how zero feels. Just like fine wine. Just like leave some of your bugs. They turn into fine wine. Yes. Oh, taste it. Taste it going down the gullet. Doesn't that say, doesn't that taste great? Oh yeah, that's that's a bug that's been sitting there for eight months. Cool. So what's great about, um, there we go here. Let's equip one of these swords and now we'll have some knockback. So let's go feel the difference here. Yeah, this sword does not have very much knockback, but the ax does. So if we equip an ax. Wait, 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 wait. Oh yeah, equipped, okay. Isn't that a, there we go. Oh, that just kills him right away. Wait, it didn't equip, the, what? Oh, probably because I hacked my file again, whatever. Whatever, I'm keeping it. I like it. I should have just committed this faster. Get commit. Not even checking it anymore. I'm not typing that twice. I'm gonna type it once. Well, what happened there? Big Y. Big yank. Big yank. It's always kind of bugged me actually about how Vim calls copying yanking. I can't type the uppercase R right now. It's fine. It's fine. Yes. Right? What's who names who names their copy yank? It's like it's like um it's like Mastodon calling their tweeting tooting. Right? Who names their tweets toots you remapped it to C. I, rem I remapped a lot of things but not yank yank is copy oh whatever don't show numbers for the shore bot this is an easy one i swear it's so easy the shore bot you can currently hurt him or it looks like you can hurt him you still think yank right <laughs> i know right that like inner monologue you have not monologue but like sometimes Sometimes when I'm typing things in Vim I ha and I stop to think about it, I'm like, yank inner word or like delete around brackets or whatever. But yeah, my inner voice says the thing and then I'm, I'm like, yank, 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 yank. Saying the word yank in my head makes me feel weird. There, he turns red and he's got numbers above his head, which makes you think, I should keep attacking this guy. But you're not supposed to, he doesn't He doesn't actually get hurt. So he shouldn't have any numbers. What is it about a railing that actually does that again? Health is a flag called hide amounts and no rumble. Okay, we're gonna do that on this guy's health too. Hide amounts, no rumble. Oh, I should turn off. This thing, skip all cutscenes, yes. Yay! There, now it's not so juicy when you hit him. It's not like, hey, I wanna keep doing this or anything. This is ineffectual. Yes, another quick one. Another time not typing things in. So many <laughs> pro points, right? I got at least two or three more pro points. I have not been keeping track of any of my pro points, but I know I have a lot of them. Really great. Great work today, Nat. Killing it. You're so pro. Good stuff, I'm ripping it. Look at this, how many have we got done today? 16 already, nice. Okay, we needed a nerf the gold and light rewards a little bit. Shouldn't the invincible mod have those sun mods? Oh, sub mods? What did I do with that? Sub mods, what you talking about? Sub mods? Please clarify, my friend. Gold and light rewards. Getting a little bit too much gold, especially from this. Make it room reward. Oh, room rewards you get 25, especially the 100s, but not the elementals. I think the elementals are the only ones you get the 100s from. 25 is fine. You can get 25s all day long and that's not too much. It's gotta be the elementals. Create block creep this is where we'd get his rewards. Okay, there we go. Quantity, gold, 100. So we're gonna have to nerf that a little bit. 50 is probably fine. And light, we're getting 25 in the other one. We might as well get 32 here. And we can nerf a little bit in rewards for feeding a creep. Maybe four to six, maybe two to six? Three to six, how about three? I added two mods, but there were some invincible one already. Oh, 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 I 
I see what you're saying. Okay, yeah. That would be a system, that would be a lot of modifications to the system though. So, good thought. Like, ideally, yes, you're right. Like, if it already has invincible, this one is invincible to team though. It's a little, actually, that, yeah, it's a very good point you bring up, right? If you're invincible to your own team, you should probably hide amounts too, but that's coding work, which requires testing and, <laughs> and requires debugging. Both of those things I'd rather not do right now. But you know what? Hey, how about this? I can add it to the list. No, you know what? It's, it's too much work to add it to the list. <laughs> Good, good idea. Almost did it. Very tempting. Very, very tempting. So your the boss drops a ton of gold. Maybe that should be a little less. Nah, I like the boss that he drops so much gold. It's really fun. Nah, but you're already getting so much gold if you do win. Yeah, this should be more like 100, and this should be more like 50, and the light should be more like 32, 60. This is pretty good. This is pretty good right here. Yeah. Okay, we've nerfed the gold a little bit. Okay, so we got your regular creeps. Instead of getting four to eight, you get three to six. The bosses give you 100 instead of 128. The mini boss gives you 50 instead of 64. And the elementals give you 50 instead of 100. Good stuff. Oh, don't type that. Don't actually type that. What? Don't even ever think I would type that. Copy and paste it. That's at least one pro point. Done! Awesome. Okay, we're about that time. About that time to wrap it up. So check it out. Well, look at this. Look at this. Zang. Yank it. No, don't ever type it when you can yank it. Ho oh, ho ho. Yeah, that's a, that should be that should be a meme. Don't type it when you can yank it. Oh my god. All the vimmers in the world will be like, yes. Right. I'm never gonna type again if I can yank. I wanna yank all day long if I instead of typing. Awesome. This is really great. So check it out. We did all these things on this stream. This right here from 22 on. So we did eight things on today's stream. These eight things got done. Wow. Wow. Just gotta step back and look at the look at how beautiful that is. Sometimes it takes me an entire day to just do one thing. We got eight things done on this one stream. Amazing. <laughs> one of the ten Vim commandments. Thou shalt not type. If thou canst yank. If thou canst yank, thou must yank. <laughs> Absolute pro for sure, right? For sure. Not I'm like a I'm I'm almost there on pro gaming on at this at this one game. That's definitely not pro gaming. Can you be a pro at one I guess you can be a pro if you're a pro at one game. Pro shalleth yanketh instead of typeth. Absolutely. Write that down. Everybody everybody watching this stream or this video later, write that down. You need to keep that in your mind. Write that down, put it on your wall. Every morning you need to look at that and say, Am I am I typing or yanking? Definitely yanking. I shall yanketh all all I caneth todayeth. Yeah. Well well awesome. Well, Hey, it's time for it's time for Wizard Foo Nat here to get on his to his rock climbing tonight. I'm rock climbing at the gym. Oh, gonna get some boulders. Oh, tattoo it on the back of your head. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. Just right, just tattoo Yanketh on the back of your head. <laughs> I love it. Oh man. Oh, I really want to see somebody that actually has that that tattoo. Yeah, enjoy it too, Gladiar. Yeah, man, you enjoy your time too. Happy New Year once again. And um, yeah, thanks for watching the stream. The beta went really good, by the way. The second beta went really well for Wraithbinder, and uh, there'll be another beta in a, probably a couple months. And hopefully that one has co-op by then. We'll see. Oh, you're in. Oh, you're in. Okay. Dang. Dang, 2 a.m. Oh, yeah, yeah. The um, Wraithbinder second beta is still playable, by the way. It's playable until tomorrow night. So if you are wanting to play Wraithbinder, you can get this beta just by going to the Wraithbinder store page on Steam. Um, but yeah, everybody signing out. Thanks again for watching today's stream and yucking it up with the old wizard foo. Have a good one, everybody. And um, remember to yanketh if instead of typing. Very important. <laughs>